Um, my name's Tom Sullivan. I'm a specialist anaesthetist based in Melbourne. And my practice encompasses a broad range of anaesthesia from adults, children, and, and also obstetrics, but I have a special interest in patients undergoing uh, complex surgery and, and heart and lung surgery. Uh, so the majority of an anaesthetist's work is in caring for patients undergoing uh, surgery, so in and around the time of having surgery. Um, and that includes uh, from meeting the patient and having a pre-operative assessment and pre-operative planning for that operation, looking after them during the surgery, and then also looking after them afterwards, including a pain relief. Uh, during surgery, there are different types of or ways that we can administer an anaesthetic, um, everything from a general anaesthetic through to sedation, and then also using what we call regional anaesthesia. So general anaesthetic is when you get someone fully off to sleep uh, and usually you insert an airway device uh, as well to help them support their breathing and maintain a patent airway. Sedation can be anything from fully awake to fully asleep. And the main aim of sedation is to keep someone comfortable through that procedure. And so these might be used when you're also administering local anaesthetic or a numbing agent to part of the body or having a procedure like a colonoscopy or gastroscopy. Um, large, lastly, there's regional anesthesia. So that encompasses everything from a spinal epidural block, which people have for cesarean sections and during labor, um, different types of knee surgery and hip surgery. And then also nerve blocks, which can be used for pain relief and can also be used for um, uh, to provide for the anesthetic as well. So they can be the only anesthetic used. Anesthetists are also specialists outside of theatre, so we are specialists in things like airway management, um, in advanced life support, in providing acute pain relief as well, and in looking after patients in what we call the perioperative medicine phase. So uh, supporting them before, during and after operation to try and get them through uh, as healthy and happily as possible. I first became interested in anaesthesia when I was a medical student and then I was fortunate enough to have a rotations as my first two during my first two years as a junior doctor and then in my third year I got onto the training program. Uh, the training program itself is is five years of um, on the job training with exams and uh, ongoing assessments. What I really liked about anaesthetics was that you play an important role in helping someone through a really difficult or generally a difficult phase um, when they're particularly vulnerable. So looking after them and assessing them, reassuring them before an operation, taking really close care of them in a one-to-one -one situation during an operation, and then ensuring that they hopefully have a really good recovery. Uh, I liked that it had a great mix of acute medicine. So looking after someone um, right at that time, there's a lot of procedural aspects to our job and a great mix of science, so physiology, so understanding how the heart works, the lung works, and, and pharmacology, um, so understanding how different drugs work and then also how they work uh, and affect different parts of the body. I'm fortunate in that I have a broad practice in anaesthetics, so I look after patients having lots of different types of surgeries and I look after adults and children. So the majority of or my work is across general surgery, different types of orthopedic surgery, and to me, nose and throat surgery and, and maxillofacial surgery. And for children in particular for um, ear, nose and throat surgery. I also look after women having, uh, or during the phase of delivery or giving birth, so for cesarean sections and epidural anesthesia. My special interest though is in uh, heart and lung surgery and anesthesia for cardiac and thoracic procedures. So this is for patients having bypass grafts, valve replacement surgery or aortic surgery, and um, also patients having lung surgery. And uh, that is in and of itself a subspecialty of anesthesia with a number of different considerations. I would want the examinee to feel that they their issues that they've brought to me are understood and investigated and, and teased out. To, so that we have a clear understanding of the problems that they present and perhaps also the background to them. I'd like them to feel that they're validated so that you know they appreciate that we've gone to the time and the effort and the length to really, to really get to know them and what they've brought to us uh, so that we can help them on their journey through this process of or dealing with their injury.
As a specialist anaesthetist, I bring a broad and extensive understanding of the patient's journey from where they are before they are even selected or chosen or agreeing to undergo surgery, through that phase of having this surgery and then into the recovery phase, both immediately and afterwards. I understand every step that they go through, including their assessment, the planning for an anaesthetic, the, the choice or the techniques used, and then how they're managed in theatre, after theatre. So I can help you tease out where things perhaps could have been done better, where things went wrong, where things were missed, and to actually work out the nuts and bolts of a situation or a patient's case uh, to help you. I work across many different surgical specialties. I work with patients of all ages undergoing all sorts of different things. So I know a lot about the different surgeries and, uh, and what's required and can help you clarify different issues that arise. Moreover, I have a specialist interest in cardiac and thoracic surgery and was fortunate enough to spend a year at the world-renowned Royal Patworth Hospital, which is one of the premier hospitals in the world and certainly the premier cardiac and thoracic hospital in the United Kingdom. Cardiac anesthesia in particular is a whole different beast. Uh, patients are uh, often physiologically, so in terms of heart and lung function, right at the edge, undergoing major surgery using a heart and lung machine, uh, where the phys physiology and pharmacology are all distorted. I can help you understand this, uh, understand patients with severe cardiac and lung disease because that's where my expertise is and to tease out again the issues of where um, things are where they've gone wrong where they've been done right but also uh, you know what's important for this case and for this patient moreover in anesthetists we have a huge range of skills which are utilized by other medical professionals anesthetists are experts in airway management so from a simple airway assessment or looking after a patient's airway, whether they have sedation or a general anaesthetic, to performing procedures like intubation and difficult intubations. We perform nerve blocks, which are injections to numb a nerve. We perform advanced life support, and we undertake sedation. Now, interestingly, a lot of these different procedures and techniques are used by other medical professionals who don't have the same training and expertise. So I can help you clarify what is accepted or acceptable practice to identify where something has followed, you know, appropriate clinical practice and clinical guidelines, or where something has been missed or not performed to, to what I would consider best practice. In my career, I prided myself on, you know, giving really great care to patients and everyone who comes my way and I, I really put everything into my practice and for me I still see issues where that doesn't happen where patients get suboptimal care where they're not followed up appropriately where things could have been done better um, and that's what I want to be part of I, I want to be part of the process that works to improve things and I think that's uh, you know this is one way that I can contribute uh, seen it in all sorts of different walks of life where as a doctor you have a bit more of an understanding of the system and an understanding of where things could have gone or should have gone and you have opinions and I think the average person doesn't they're not part of that system they're not in the inside so I want to be able to help those people and to make right from something that was done wrong.